What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. The first four games of the playing tournament are officially over. Of course, we already had one team that got eliminated the other day, that being the Golden State Warriors, which we did a video on them the, uh, yesterday. And now we have ourselves the Atlanta Hawks after they were eliminated by the Chicago Bulls last night. And similar to the Golden State Warriors, the Hawks offseason should also be fairly interesting for different reasons. The Warriors are going to try to continue to build around Stephen Curry, while the Hawks, well, they should probably trade everybody if possible, to be honest. Not everybody, but... Trade and Jonathan Murray should go, or at least one of them should go, and uh, I assume that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, I can't be for sure what the Hawks are going to do. I'm going to do my very best on what I think is best for the team and predict what I think they're going to do. So let's just go ahead, get into this offseason rebuild of the Atlanta Hawks. Let's just jump right into it. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Right now, we are on the road to 50,000 subs, so your subscription to help us reach that goal would be awesome. So... We'll have Miami and Chicago playing each other for the last seed. And then, of course, we'll have um, New Orleans and Sacramento on the other side playing for the last seed in the Western Conference. Uh, what are, you know, what do, what do Keon Ellis, Zion Williamson, Kobe White, and Nick Batum all have in common? That's four guys, not three. Sorry. They all gave us cinematic basketball over these first four playing games. Hopefully, you can continue to see that because those were some role players that really stepped up. Kobe White obviously has really blossomed into something really special this year for the Bulls. So I'm glad to see him pop off the way he did. But with that all being said, let's go ahead and see who wins the championship. And of course, we can get straight in this offseason and focus on this Hawks squad and what we're going to do with this team. Because believe me, I have some plans on what we're going to do with this team. So Paul George is your Conference Finals MVP and Jalen Brown is your Conference Finals MVP. And he got the Boston Celtics going on to beat the Clippers in seven games. LeBron James is trying to retire. Of course, I always override that at least once because I don't think he's going to be done after this season. But let's go straight to the lottery because that's, of course, where it always starts for these teams that are in the lottery right now. We got to focus on the lottery at first. So we're projected pick number 10, which is nice. If we can find a way to get lucky and jump up, that would be fantastic. We'll see if we get that kind of luck today, but I doubt it. So pick number 10, we stay at 10. So we'll at least have a lottery pick here. The Raptors get one, which is actually kind of crazy luck for them. I think they had six best odds. Grizzlies two, Blazers three, Wizards four. Pistons five is the most beautiful part is I don't think there's a pick I need to fix. Actually, that's not true. Uh, number 12 via the Mavericks. So I figured out yesterday what the problem was. The Oklahoma City Thunder, that's supposed to be the pick that the Thunder have. I have no idea why 2K gave it to the Mavericks. It makes no sense, man. 2K screws up all these picks. It's so weird. Just doesn't make any sense. Whatever. But um, let's get to staff signing because we are going to keep Quinn Snyder. I think he's actually uh, you know, a solid coach to keep around for this rebuild if he is interested in that. I don't know if he signed up to you know, go in a rebuild. Um, we'll see if that ends up happening for the Hawks. I believe... I mean, it would be malpractice. I feel like we, you know, we thought this with the Chicago Bulls this last offseason, but it would be malpractice if this Hawk squad tried to run it back. It just wouldn't make any sense, in my opinion. You got to trade at least one of them, if not both of them. Uh, so once we get this guard guru, we are going to focus on making trades right away. We're probably going to start off with, with, with the banger, to be honest with you. So uh, I will build that trade out, but we have our coaching stack completely filled out. We have the 10th overall pick. I'm going to go fix that Mavericks pick, and then we are also going to probably make a trade before draft night with at least one of these guys. Today's video is brought to you by DGF's Optimizer. If you're playing on apps such as Price Picks, Underdog, or any other DFS app, having a tool like this is so clutch to finding good plays without having to do any research whatsoever. For example, right now we have Tyrese Halliburton on the board under 15 and a half rebounds and assists, and I found that play in literally two seconds. Every single book is heavily, heavily Favoring the under right now. You have FanDuel at minus 138 odds, DraftKings minus 130, and 15 and a half from MGM minus 140. You also have Ubre under seven and a half rebounds and assists, Franz Wagner. Like there's so many different plays on here that you just take um and you literally found them within two seconds. I absolutely love using this tool. Ever since I've started using this tool, I'm now up twelve hundred dollars in profit since I've started using this tool, which is actually insane because I can't imagine how it was before that. So, um, yeah, if you want to check this tool out, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHWOLLS, 25% off your first month. And, of course, I'm using it on apps such as Price Picks, which I'm also partnering with. If you want to check out Price Picks, use code CRUSHWOLLS. They match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. So the way Price Picks works is you choose between two to six players, two players being three times your entry, all the way up to six players being 25 times your entry. And there's no better time to sign up for Price Picks than right now because they have a free square on Nicole Jokic for the playoffs. They did it for game two. No idea why they chose game two, but whatever. You have more time. Game two, of course, is on Monday. So if Jokic scores more than one point, you win. So go check out Prize Fix. That is a free money square. I would definitely take advantage of that. Use code Crushables, like I said, 25% off, or sorry, up to $100 deposit match 
on prize picks using code crushables and dgf is 25 percent off your first month and i will show you yesterday what dgf was able to bring to me so um this one was heartbreaking because tyler fitzgerald needed one base he stole a base but apparently that doesn't count i don't know but this was beautiful i would assume in the first half uh hit two threes so we cashed this one and this all came from dgs optimizer so the results are in the pudding go check any of this out all links down in the description below other than that let's get back to the rebuild i'm gonna be honest when it comes to that mavericks pick i actually don't know who it's supposed to go to or i don't know what this 12th pick is supposed to go to because it sounds like the mavericks sent that pick to the wizards but then there's like some least favorable stuff on there i don't know it's kind of confusing so that's besides the point it really doesn't matter that much we'll just ignore it today i sent it to the wizards it's maybe it's not supposed to go to the wizards i don't know but whatever let's focus on the hawks so we are going to start off with a banger here and that is we're going to trade trey young right out of the gate i think it's time to move on from him if i'm the hawks I think the writing's on the wall. I'm going to move on from John T. Murray as well, but I already have a good trade idea in mind. I kind of tweeted it yesterday uh, in a reply to Masa when he was talking about how the Hawks should, you know, trade. Uh, I forgot what, exactly what he said, but that's besides the point. We are about to trade Trey Young, and there's a perfect trade partner. It's very easy. That is with the Spurs. It just makes so much sense right now. The Spurs need a point guard, and the biggest thing of them all is the Spurs have all the Hawks draft picks. So you can send Trey Young back to the uh or not back but you could trade him to the spurs get all your draft picks back and whatever else you know the spurs offered like the seventh overall pick obviously it's probably not gonna be on the table but trey young and women yama trey young's already talked about playing with women yama and you know how cool it would be or something along the lines of that so we are going to try to make this happen so i am going to try to get every at least every single hawks pick that i can get so let's make sure we're looking at all of them correctly so 2025 unprotected uh 2026 swap uh what else we got 2027 uh, and then I guess we can send the Spurs swap back to them so we can do that. Uh, swap best so we can do that. And then we can go, um, or I guess we can just leave that the way it is. Maybe just give me my pick back, but whatever. All right. And then do we have any other Hawks pick in here that we could get? Doesn't look like it. I think that's all of them. Just double checking though. But yeah, I think if you can get all your picks back and maybe an extra one as well, that'd be nice. So let's say you got uh, maybe it's like top 10 protected Bulls pick or something. Uh, so yeah, Trey Young is in this trade. We need 42 million, or it looks like the Spurs need to throw a little bit of money in here. Uh, so you could go with maybe getting like uh, not Vassell, obviously. Maybe Keldon Johnson is a piece that the you know the Hawks would be willing to trade away. I got him in yesterday's video, so if, and I got Zach Collins yesterday too. But uh, Devonte Graham, I guess what they don't need that much money in this trade, just a little bit. So Devonte Graham as a piece, and then if there's like one young player that I can get out of them as well, that'd be fantastic. I just don't know. You get like Charles or Malachi Branham, Jeremy Sohan. I guess it would be Keldon Johnson. That gives us gives us maybe a little bit of someone to be excited about. Um, let's see if they would do it with Keldon Johnson involved as well. So I don't know if they're even to do this trade. They may not even, you know, accept this. But Trey Young for all these draft picks and Keldon Johnson. Uh, whoops, I need to turn off trade override. So hold on. Uh, that's going to be annoying to deal with. So I might turn that off really quickly. Hold on. Give me two seconds. So now that trade override is off, let's see if we can make this trade happen. So when I put Keldon Johnson in, they immediately turned it down. So I guess I would just do it for Devon Graham and four first round picks. They get all my picks back. Trey Young goes to Spurs. Now, if I'm the Hawks, yes, I would look for more than just this. If you can get more than just this, um, unfortunately, trying to make like a superstar trade in 2K is nearly impossible. It's just really hard to do and get the best value you possibly can. So I'm doing my very best here. They want a first round pick in this draft and uh yeah that's not gonna happen so i'm not throwing a first round pick so yeah i'm gonna have to give up more value which is really annoying that's just how 2k is it's just kind of irritating so i could throw like muhammad gi in here and maybe like bruno fernando or something i don't really want to do that but we have to throw more value in here for them to even consider this trade which is quite annoying like i said uh but let's see what would you do for gi in here as well they still want that first round pick i'll give you a couple seconds instead uh, they want that Sacramento pick now, which by the way, we have another lottery or not a lottery pick. It's right outside the lottery. But yeah, I'm going to try to do this without that being involved. So yeah, we are struggling here a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Can you give me like city instead of Devontae Graham? Like maybe we do that instead. No, they need that money in here. So, uh, so we'll throw Graham back in here. Muhammad Gee is in here. I will give you also, uh, I'm not giving up Kobe Bufkin, obviously. I can give you Bogdan and dump his money off, maybe. Uh, I don't know if they'd be interested in that. That's a two and a half star value, and they're going to need more money in this trade as well, which, again, I don't like doing this, but if I'm going to make something happen with the Spurs, uh, 
this would be it. So Zach Collins, that doesn't matter any, any, at all. Anyway, so we're going to have to keep it to this. I will once again throw a... I mean, can I throw this pick swap in here? Maybe that makes a difference. I don't know. Let's see. They want a couple seconds. Okay, again. This is not the best trade whatsoever. Making a superstar trade in 2K is not easy. You got to like this is if I was the Hawks, I'd be looking for more than just this. But we are getting our picks back plus a top 10 protected Chicago pick that could convey into a 2026 unprotected. Maybe I could maybe we don't ask for the 20 top 10 protected pick. Maybe we ask for like a 2025 unprotected, which actually that's really valuable. So let's go maybe in the future. Let's say we get this I mean like is there another pick maybe maybe like this swap with the celtics in the future or something along the lines of that maybe we keep this and maybe we can do this without that first round pick being involved uh they want again the 2024 first round pick whatever so i'll throw this pick in there again and they agree so jay young's going to spurs that took a while but uh, that was the first move i wanted to make i wanted trey young absolutely out of here and that's exactly what happened so i'm glad we got that done so now that Trey Young is gone, the next guy we're going to do is obviously John Timmer. I want to trade him as well. And all this is happening before draft night uh, at the moment. I don't know if this will all happen overnight for the Atlanta Hawks, but I imagine, like I said, they're going to look at trading John Timmer. They're going to look at trading uh, Trey Young. So we're going to look at this trade or uh, trade market and see what trade finder would do. So we can get Evan freaking Mobley. That'd be freaking insane. But I don't think the Cavs are doing that. Derek White, Peyton Pritchard. There was a trade that popped up to me that I found very interesting. Now, obviously, this guy in real life is not a good person, but what he could be in 2K for us potentially uh, would be really nice. And I am looking at Josh Giddy. We get a 21-year-old guard uh, to kind of give us something to be uh, excited about as far as building a future here. And we get a top five protected pick out of this. I do like this. I feel like the Thunder may be getting like John Timur to pair him with Shade. The John Timur has been really good. So I don't hate this. Uh, and the Thunder aren't giving up much either to do this. I feel like they're totally fine with moving Josh Giddy and getting him out of here because based off what you know happened, what happened... Uh, he never f was found guilty of anything, but uh, whatever. So I am going to try to get another first if I can out of them. And then we are going to try to make this trade. It's where I get Josh Giddy, uh, a piece to be excited about to build around. And then we get also, uh, you know, so I feel good about this. Let's see. Two firsts as well. Fernando, they want that Sacramento pick, but we get a, ooh, if we trade this 15th overall pick, we get a 2025 Utah unprotected. That's, that's pretty solid. I'm not going to lie. It, it would suck to trade that 15th overall pick, though. So if I can keep that out of here, maybe throw in... I mean, Devontae... I don't know if Devontae Graham could be thrown in this trade to make anything happen. They still want that Sacramento pick. So I don't know if we're getting away with it. So yeah, actually, you know what? I think to get a... Yeah, I think we're going to do this. So, well, let's see if we can do it with a couple seconds instead of that Kings pick. So we're going to try to make this happen. They still want that Sacramento pick. They'll throw me Linder... Lind I don't think I'm getting out of here without trading that Sacramento pick, which, you know what? I think is worth it. Uh, they love our current roster. Oh, now they want our Atlanta pick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go back to the original trade. Let's go back to the original trade and counter off me. This is taking a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but let's try this again. They're going to want Fernando and that Sacramento pick. They give me a 2025 unprotected jazz pick. Done deal. Josh Giddy, welcome to Atlanta. And he gets a new change of scenery. Oklahoma City moves on from him, which I could totally see happening anyway. And now there is more we can do. But we're going to jump into draft night and uh, start trading everyone else later on. So we get the 10th overall pick. It would have been awesome to keep that 15th pick as well. Uh, but getting a 2025 unprotected, which could be a lot better of a draft class next year, is probably the move. So I'm happy with that. So pick number 10, we have Ron Holland, Buzelis, Donovan Klingon, Jacoby Walter, Isaiah Collier, Tyler Smith. Man, there's a lot of good options here. But I think someone I have not taken yet. Well, let's see. Is there any... They're like. Okay, Dillingham would have been awesome if he fell to me here, but unfortunately he did not. That would have been like the best pick possible. But Ron Holland doesn't seem too bad. Donovan Klingon, I've taken already. Collier, I've gotten in a uh, Spurs video. So I do think we get Ron Holland here. So I'm going to welcome Ron Holland to Atlanta. Gives us another forward to be excited about. So welcome to Atlanta, Ron Holland. And then player options, AJ Griffin, Garrison Matthews. I'll accept Garrison Matthews. AJ Griffin, I think has fallen out of the rotation. Sadiq Bey is a restricted free agent. He has 25 still, so it would make sense to maybe keep him around uh, potentially. But uh, other than that, we do have an MLE if we want to use it. Uh, but let's look at the rotation now. So it's Devontae Graham, Kobe Bufkin, Josh Giddy, Bogdan Madonovich. You have AJ Griffin, Garrison Matthews, Jalen Johnson, DeAndre Hunter, Ron Holland, and then Clint Capella at Okongwu. So Okongwu is here to stay. Uh, Ron Holland or DeAndre Hunter is probably going to be moved here. So I think the other two, actually, three more guys I want to move are like Bogdan. Uh, hunter and capella now i'm going to trade capella this offseason the other two might have to wait till like the deadline potentially but let's let's move on from capella here 
So I'm going to try to make this trade happen. The 76ers, they get a upgrade at their backup center position, gives them insurance for Joel Embiid ever going down. So I think this trade actually makes some sense for uh, Philadelphia. Also, they have a bunch of cap space to absorb Capella with the rest of the money. We got Paul Reed as a backup center. I'm going to try to get uh, this Houston swap. Let's see what they say. We want a couple seconds. They'll give me another pick. I don't think we have to go that far. Like, I don't know why you'd want another, you know, trade me. Like, that Clippers aren't protected should be so valuable. Like, I don't know why they're just throwing it to me. This trade would feel very unrealistic to me. Uh, so if you want two seconds, sure. But they're they're dead set on giving that Clippers unprotected. I absolutely hate it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, what? What are we? Or, okay. Let's try this again. Let's do this. And then whatever. They're going to give me the Clippers pick. They refuse to not take or not give it up. So um, whatever. We got the Clippers pick, which is kind of dumb in their part. But whatever. I couldn't do anything about it. So uh, we got Paul Reed as our backup center, which is great. I feel really good about that. I feel good what we've done about or what we've done this offseason so far. I'm going to move DeAndre Hunter to small forward. And then is do we need to keep Hunter? Because right now, AJ Griffin. So I think I'm going to keep DeAndre Hunter for uh, this season. And then I'm going to move him at the deadline. So Jalen Johnson, Ron Holland will be our forwards uh, for now. Uh, Kong Wu, Paul Reed. That feels good. AJ Griffin and then Josh Giddy. Yeah, so I think we have a full rotation as it is. I don't think I'm going to do anything else. Now, as far as Josh Giddy is concerned, if I move to point guard, he goes down. If I move to small forward, he goes up. I guess the happy medium is leaving him, up, leaving him at the two guard, at least for right now. Now, while we could sign a free agent, I'm not interested in, you know, spending in free agency. I want to just tank the night away. Now that we have our draft pick, our draft picks, it makes sense to just tank this team and see what happens. And then at the deadline, there's more moves to be done with, obviously, Hunter and Bogdan for sure. So we will move those guys as well to keep this team even worse. But yeah, that was a long off season. I kind of knew it would be. Uh, we needed to trade pretty much everybody there. Uh, not every, we traded almost everybody. We got two more guys. I think we should move. But yeah, Trey Dejounte Murray are both gone. I feel pretty good about the Trey Young trade. Absolutely could have been better. Again, it was going to be really hard to make something happen. But I, the ultimate goal was to get our draft picks back, and we did that. and We accomplished that. So I feel good about that. Uh, seven seconds, three and a half, not too shabby to start things off here. So Graham is our starting poor guard right now. Honestly, I think I'd rather start Kobe Bufkin, but oh yeah, Sneak Bay. I totally forgot about him as well. He's another piece we could trade at the deadline. Uh, meant to resign him, but whatever. Josh Skinny Hunter, Jalen Johnson, Okongwu, Sneak Bay, Bogdan, Paul Reed, and Ron Holland. So now that this is all set and done, which again, I'm going to, I'm going to throw Kobe Bufkin these minutes over Devontae Graham. I just think it makes way more sense. So we're going to do that. And now we need to look at shots in the season because we don't have a clear, like, guy here so josh giddy i mean i guess we should turn him into the guy here a little bit so i'm gonna do that and then i also want jalen johnson to turn into that guy for us so i'm gonna boost his shot tendency up like crazy as well so we're gonna see how this goes with these guys shot tendency boosted up we need you guys to be the leaders here uh because we you know obviously traded away a lot of our traded away to jante and trey young which was our was our first two options so if you guys can step up that'd be great other than that, we are going to go ahead and select this season, see how it goes. I will definitely stop at the deadline and trade DeAndre Hunter and maybe Bogdan, uh, but I will, you know, cross that bridge when we get there. So as promised, we are at the trade deadline and the Hornets are offering me a trade. I can't refuse for uh, DeAndre Hunter services. He's a 3 and D wing. He would fit really well next to Brendan Miller and LaMelo Ball. He's shooting 40% from three this season. So the Hornets are okay with giving me Trey Mann in the 2027 first. I'm absolutely going to go ahead and do this trade. So we get a first round pick and Trey Mann for Mr. DeAndre Hunter's services, which feels pretty damn good to get uh, from his services. Now, is Bogdan. I want to move him as well. He's averaging 12 points, 0.7% shooting from three. We know what kind of piece Bogdan is. So once again, just kind of looking for whatever value I can get out of Bogdan. I just want to move him and be as bad as possible for the rest of the season. So we can get Terrence Mann and Amir Coffey, um, which is okay, but that doesn't really do much for us. Grant Williams, Kevin Herter. Again, kind of looking for a pick here. They want a top to protected pick though. Or Infinity Smith. If I can't get a draft pick, get a second round pick, and Steven Adams expiring contract, it wouldn't be bad to just get off Bogdan's contract, to be honest with you. So I don't hate that trade. If I can somehow make that a, like a protected first, I'd be happy, or maybe two seconds. So yeah, I would be happy with this trade. Uh, the Wizards pick, obviously, going to be way too valuable, I assume. Um, this Nets pick in the future, would you be willing to move? Let's see. They're going to want my top 10 protected pick. Okay, let's say we just did two seconds then for Bogdan just to get off his contract simply. Okay, so we get two seconds. I'll take that. I could, you could argue, you could argue with me, or you could convince me rather that you know Bogdan's with the first, and I would definitely probably agree. But um, I'm okay with just getting off his contract. So Deep Bay is someone I also want to look into trading. Now he does have no trade clause, so it would be up to him. But it looks like they're letting me uh, search the trade market for him. He's making literally seven million dollars. 
I'm not going to move him for no reason, though. So, Brooke Lopez in a first-round pick. Um, okay, that's kind of interesting. But Duck Robinson at first. We get Duck Robinson salary. Uh, it is an expiring contract. We had a first-round pick for Zeke Bay in 2029. He would be a piece that would be valuable to Miami. We get Sasha in a 2025 top protected pick from the Kings. So, yeah, there is some value to get here for Sadiq Bay. Uh, so, I do think we're going to go ahead and collect another 2025 pick here. Um, as the Kings, I guess, think they're good enough to go ahead and send me one. So, we're going to do this trade. And just like that, I feel pretty solid about some of the assets we have collected so far. So, now we are going to simulate the rest of the season with this rotation as is. Um, we're going to go to a 9 rotation now just because I don't need uh, Sasha to get minutes, really. And we'll leave it at that. So, I feel good about what we've done so far. We've accomplished a lot. Let's keep it going. So here's how the awards went to end the season. And it's kind of crazy because even after trading Trey Young into John T. Murray, we're literally just as good as we were last year. We do end up being in the play-in tournament. We get Boston in the first leg of the play-in tournament. Josh Giddy averaged 21 points, which is nice. Jalen Johnson with 18, 14 from Kobe Bufkin, 13 from Trey Mann. Uh, 10 from Wukong Wu, 10 from Ron Holland. So not too shabby. All around pretty damn solid from what we got of our young core. Now, I'm not really expecting to beat Boston here, though. Ah, we do. Wow, do we get the playoffs? Okay, we are in the playoffs after trading Trey Young to John T. Murray. That is something I did not see happening. I'm going to be completely honest with you. But you know what? We are here. So whatever. Let's see if we can come somehow beat the Knicks in round one. I highly doubt that. Uh, but you never know. Somebody come around against the New York Knicks. And the Knicks are going to beat us in five. So at least we got in there. We got some playoff experience, which is kind of crazy. Even after trading Trey into John T. Murray. We didn't make the playoffs. I planned on tanking last year. Did not work out that way. Now, one problem I did make for myself in this video... If I'm ever going to win a championship, I definitely made the Oklahoma City Thunder a lot better with Jonte Murray. So we'll see if that ends up uh, backfiring later on. But whatever. Miami and Oklahoma City Thunder going to win the championships. LeBron James is going to finally retire a Laker. So let's go to lottery night once again. Now, obviously, I did collect a few 2025 picks. I don't know if any of them are going to end up in the lottery. So we shall see. Hopefully. So I did see. Okay. So we have projected Utah's pick, which is nice. So we got that from the Thunder. A rejected Sacramento's pick, which feels really good as well. So the Sacramento Kings must have been on the verge of the play and thought, okay, let's get Sadiq Bay and we can bank on making it. So if we can leapfrog into the top three with this Utah pick, that would be amazing. And we do not. Damn, we get five. Okay, that's a, that sucks, but it's better than nothing. We get 13 as well. And then do we have another pick? We have Philadelphia's pick at 28. So not too shabby. Houston has one uh, via Washington. I'm pretty sure that pick is protected. So... Once again, another, and then 76 for Toronto. Once again, not supposed to belong to them either. So those first two picks do not belong to them. So I will fix those. I know that Toronto pick is supposed to go to Spurs. Um, and I don't know if the pick is, I don't know if Toronto's pick is protected in 2025 or not, but I know the Spurs are supposed to have it. And then the Washington pick, I'm pretty sure is protected as well. So I will get to fixing that just because I don't like it when it's not, uh, you know, how it's supposed to be, but whatever. Um, let's uh, see what the next steps will be after we fix those picks. So now that I fixed the draft picks the way they're supposed to be, if we go look at uh, draft lottery, and uh, I'm going to try to trade up in this draft. I'm going to try to trade up. So I'm going to see if the Raptors are willing to trade down where we get one of Dylan Harper or Cooper Flag uh, to fall to us. I think getting one of them would be absolutely amazing. Um, Washington would be great to convince them as well. Obviously, bringing a Cooper Flag, that'd be great. Because uh, right now, we don't really have a starting small forward. Cooper Flag would absolutely turn things around for us. So... Yeah, I think with all the draft capital that we have, it is time to try to move up in this draft. So we have our point guard. Well, we don't actually. We have our shooting guard and Josh Giddy, unless we move to point guard. We don't have our small forward. So either way, we could be happy with Cooper Flag or Dylan Harper out of this draft class. I'm going to shoot for the stars really quickly, though, and try to trade up for 20 for the first overall pick. So I'm going to trade you 5, 13, and 15, and 28 all in this draft. And then I will give you... Do I trade Ron Holland? As much no that's probably an overpay so i'm not gonna do that so let's say we just did all four of these picks and this uh, and our pick next year which would be somewhat of a mistake but i think it would be an asset that the wizard would be like okay we can bank on you guys maybe being bad next year even though we just made the playoffs so we'll just see if they say they agree so yeah i think that was well worth it so we trade up in the draft we give up everything and we're getting cooper flag in this draft so i feel fantastic about that we needed an identity going forward we got it in cooper flag so that's our brand new small forward, which is feels fantastic. Welcome again. Harper would have been great as well. Ace Bailey would have been fine. So yeah, uh, those four guys went off the board first though. So I was literally at pick number five. I would have messed out on all four of the best prospects here, which would have sucked. I guess, um, I think uh, he fell pretty far. So I guess I could have gotten him. His real name is Dink paid, I think. Uh, so yeah, he would have been good as well, but whatever. So Cooper flag, Mark Armstrong will sign player options. Sasha, I'm going to decline. Andrew Griffin, I'll accept and Buffkin, I'll accept as well. 
Qualifying offers, Jalen Johnson, Trey Mann, and Josh Gitter are all free agents, all interested in bringing them back. Um, so let's let's do that. Uh, so Josh Giddy uh, is going to get a bag. Wow, we have a bunch of cap space, but $25 million over four years does not feel bad. Or $25 million per year for him does not feel bad. Jalen Johnson, same thing. If we can get him to like 18, I think that's feel, that feels pretty good as well. So we're going to sign those two guys. And then I have money to sign someone else if I want to, which I'm going to look and see if it makes any sense to do so. So I'm looking at the point guard spot right now for what, I, you know, if I was going to get someone to be point guard. I like Kobe Bufkin, but he's not developed into like a great point guard, obviously. Uh, Cade Cunningham would be great, but that would be, um, I don't think that's actually going to happen. Jalen Suggs, Cameron Thomas, Kamenga, uh, Trey Murphy. No, nah, I don't really see anything. Of course, unless I was throwing an offer sheet at Cade, maybe, but we'll just for now focus on re-signing Josh Giddey and Jalen Johnson. So we get them back on some really good contracts, which I absolutely love. We have Kyrie Irving and then Cade Cunningham somehow was renounced. I can't afford him, man. I really could. I just, it, dude, it makes no sense for the Pistons to just move on from him, though, like that. I, it makes literally no sense whatsoever. But, man, we could sign Cade Cunningham and really turn this around. I mean, he's there. He's there. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense, bro. Like, the realistic part of me is, like, wondering if I should really do that. But he's going to sign somewhere because whatever the Pistons let him go. He has no offers right now. I can secure him in Atlanta. I got to do it, man. I got to do it. It makes no sense whatsoever. But if he was renounced, he's going to sign somewhere. He's probably not going back to Detroit. Uh, we're going to do it. We're going to give him an offer. Unless if, unless if Detroit offers him a contract, which, you know, they don't even have really a chance to do so. What did Detroit do? Let's see what they did. Like, why did they renounce Cade? So they have signed to Rosen. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's replace Cade with Rosen, Emmanuel quickly. Yeah, you guys are doing great. You know what? They've been, they, they, they're they terrible in this simulation. So they deserve their failure. They have no, Cade still has no offers. He was going to sign somewhere. Welcome to Atlanta, Cade Cunningham. Again, not really something that's going to happen in real life, but I'm going to sign Trey Man as well. Cade, welcome to Atlanta. I, I mean, I had to take advantage of that opportunity, I feel like. So sue me. But this rotation just became very, very interesting. Cade, Cooper Flag, Josh Giddy. Jalen Johnson, Okongwu, Paul Reed. I love it. Let's go to play progression. Let's see what this is about to look like. So we have our brand new rotation. That's, uh, I mean, we just traded our 2025 pick as well. So it makes so much sense to be as good as possible. Ron Holland's up to an 80. Paul Reed is up. Trey Mann is up. Andrew Griffin is up. And so is Kobe Bufkin. So all of this is looking fantastic. I cannot wait to see what happens next year. We should be a locked and loaded playoff team after adding Cade and Cooper Flag. Cooper Flag is only going to develop as we know. Uh, but I'm very, very ecstatic about what we just accomplished. So let's go straight to 2026 draft class, load that up, and let's get into next season. So next season, let's see what this is about to look like. Proficiency um, is going to be four star, seven seconds. We could be, no, we'll leave it at seven seconds. We'll leave it at seven seconds. Here's rotation. Cade, Josh Giddy, Cooper Flagg, Jalen Johnson, Okongwu, Ron Holland, Trey Mann, Paul Reed, and AJ Griffin. And then Kobe Bufkin not getting any minutes, which I feel bad about. So I'm going to run a 10 minute rotation. So... We're going to celebrate this season, see how it goes. Um, we could probably reduce the shot tendency a little bit on some guys. So, like, Cooper Flag shot tendency is really high. Josh Giddies could probably take a back step now that, obviously, Cooper Flag is going to score Ron Holland. So, yeah, Cooper Flag shot tendency is crazy, but I think it's well-deserved. So, I'm going to go ahead, celebrate this season. We get off to a 3-0 start, 4-0 start. How many games can we win until we lose? We lost, uh, you know, at the fifth game. But whatever. So far, so good. I will see you guys at the end of this season. This beautiful season comes to an end as Luka Doncic wins MVP. Harper is your Rookie of the Year. Siakam, six-man. Wimby, defensive player. Scotty Barnes, most improved. And Edwards, clutch player. Mark is your Coach of the Year. And John Murphy is your executive. So, all around really good. I can't imagine. I don't know if Cade made an All-NBA team for us. He might have. He did not, it looks like. So, all-defensive first team, though. All-defensive second team. We end up as a playoff team right out of the gate as we are the first team in the Western Conference. So, yeah. Quick turnaround for this squad. 23 from Cade, 18 from Cooper Flag, 14 from Jalen Johnson, 13 from Ron Holland, Josh Key with 12, 11 from Trey Mann, 9 from Okongwu with 7 rebounds, 7 and 6 from Paul Reed, and 6 from AJ Griffin. I am going to shrink this down to a 9 minute rotation for the playoffs. I think it makes sense to only run 9 players here. So Cade's going to play 41 minutes here. But here we go. Round 1, we draw Detroit, Cade's former team, who uh, replaced him with DeMar DeRozan, Miles Turner, 
Asar, well, Asar is obviously already here. Grayson Allen, who probably costs a little bit of money as well. Maybe he signed for cheap. I don't know. Uh, I guess 2K doesn't have his extension in here yet or whatever, so I might have to fix that, but whatever. So, somebody current round against Detroit to see if we can beat Cade's former squad, and we are going to beat them at seven. We almost moved their zero lead. Now I get the Cavs, who, of course, are always really hard to beat. They have Donovan Mitchell, Garland, Mobley, Jarrett Allen, so there is a chance we get bounced here. And no, we beat them in five. So just like that, Second season after trading Trey to Jonte, we're in the East Conference Finals. Now we get the Pacers who have Jalen Green as a backcourt, maybe with Halliburton, which uh, honestly, that'd probably be a really good fit. But let's go ahead, see if we can beat the Pacers to make it into the NBA Finals. And we're down 4-0. to zero. We lose. Damn. Okay, so first year with Cooper Flag, Cade Cunningham results in the Conference Finals. You really can't be mad at that. We're like way ahead of schedule. So I'm, I'm not too you know upset with that. That would have been awesome to make it to the Finals year one or year two with their squad already but it's not that bad so we got houston's pick and i think that's it so i don't really know if i'll focus on the draft too much this time around we kind of have a rotation set in stone it feels like uh, and it's just a matter of letting it develop so i think i do want to bring back quinn snyder if he is available so we are going to bring him back so let's see if he would sign he does w and then assistant if we can get like a good assistant like uh unfortunately we don't have really money to give anybody that good though so Let's say we can get Logan Schmidt, maybe. Does he sign? He does. Yes. So he actually had pretty good ratings. All right. Let's go past the draft. Let's get to player options and let's see what our options will be here. So we got Ron Holland, Kobe Bufkin, Armstrong. We'll accept all of them. Uh, Adrian Griffin is a free agent. Do you want to bring him back? And then let's see what we got as far as other free agents. So Paul Reed, I'm going to bring him back as well. So yeah, this uh, team is going to start getting costly here soon, but... I still am going to keep it going. So Cooper Flag should develop like crazy. Hopefully Giddy will go up. Hopefully Jalen Johnson will go up. Like I need everyone to just keep developing. So I'm not doing anything this off season. I like my rotation. We just got the first seed with Cooper Flag's rookie season, made it to the conference finals. So I feel like if we just run it back. It's only going to keep getting better. So yeah, Josh Giddy is up. Cooper Flag is up to an 85. He's going to keep developing. Okongwu, Jalen Johnson, everyone is up and overall, which is beautiful stuff. So we're going to run it back again. This will be our third season, and it feels like we're already contenders, uh, which is great. Like, I absolutely love that. So I'm going to auto-generate these rookies because I have a feeling that we're going to make it to the finals this year. That's just my gut feeling. Four-star proficiency, seven seconds. Here's rotation once again. Uh, so we're going to leave it. Nine-minute rotation this time around. So Toby Lufkin, unfortunately, not getting minutes here, but whatever. I'm going to somebody this season. Actually, no, I feel bad. We got to get Kobe Lufkin some minutes. That first season, he was pretty good for us. So we'll go 10-minute rotation again. I'll see you guys at the end of the season. Once again, hopefully this team ends up being a first seed in the East again. It's a really solid season once again. I don't know if we got the first seed, but we did win 58 games, which is nice. So did we have an All-NBA representative here? We did not, at least not yet. Cooper Flag might eventually make one if we get that far, but um, hopefully we don't because I'm trying to win a championship right now. So we're the first seed in the Western Conference. I thought we got the second seed for some reason, but 21 points, 17 16 for Jalen Johnson, 14 for Josh Giddy, 13 from Ron Holland, 12 from Trey Mann. So all around really solid. Once again, we're going to go back to a uh, nine minute rotation, and then we're going to shrink. We're going to shrink the bench utilization down to 40. Let's make sure our guys are playing a bunch of minutes in the starting lineup. So we're playing Toronto in round one. We have Nicola, Damian Sarr, RJ, Karen Boozer, Yaka Pertle. Keegan Murray somehow ended up there. Ke uh, Grady Dick, Moses Moody. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. So Mike Curran around against Toronto, and we are going to sweep them. So off to a good start. Now we get Philadelphia, who have Jamal Murray now, and Maxi. Damn, this uh, Sixers team would be very interesting if this is somehow what they formed, uh, especially if they were able to keep Capella. But Galford's still a really good backup center as well. But yeah, Matt Murray, Maxi, OG, Tobias, Joel B. This is easily one of the best teams Jimmy has had. You know, that Tobias Harris, Jimmy Butler team was pretty solid too, uh, you know, when they had that. But unfortunately, they did, you know, keep Jimmy Butler for whatever reason. But so we occur around against uh, Philadelphia, and we're down three to two. Damn, bro. Uh, the youth may get to us here. So let's see. That Philadelphia team, it was very good on paper. So I wouldn't be like too upset if we lost to them because, again, we'll keep developing. But, man, it would feel beautiful if we can come back from two to two and get into the conference finals right here. And we are going to win this game. So we're going back to Atlanta, 25 and 25. And Washington is waiting us if we are to get past Philadelphia here. So game seven. And Atlanta, they jump off with a good start in the first quarter. Uh, but we are in a back and forth game right now. As long as we can run away with this and keep this, that'd be beautiful. And it looks like we did come back from 3-2 to two to win and go on to the conference finals once again. So this time it's the Washington Wizards. So I have Fox now. Below, Denny Abdia, Kyle Kuzma, Alex R. There is so much player movement in this video. It's actually crazy. 
Fox is a wizard now. Game one, one to zero, one forty nine to one forty six. Thirty one for Cooper Flag. Do we punch our ticket to the finals? Two to zero. So far, so good. Three to zero, and we are going to be in the finals. Let's go. So the Spurs are giving. Ooh, oh, they lost Trey Young. They suck. Oh gosh. Okay. I don't know why my immediate thought was like, wow, they lost Trey Young, but they have Luka freaking Doncic with Wemben Yama. <laughs> Bro, that's scary. That's that's intimidating. Uh, that's that's scary. Whatever. I feel like I feel like I'd almost rather play the Thunder, right? I mean, they have Jonathan Murray. Like, oh gosh, this is gonna be tough. We get we get the Spurs. I I don't know how I feel about my chances here against Luka and Wimby, but we'll give it our best shot. So Luka Vassell, Keldon Johnson, J Dub. Women, Yami, Huka, Gonzalez. This is a damn good team. If we're somehow able to beat this first team win a championship, I would be shocked. Um, here we go. Game one, one is zero goes to them. Game two, they even it. Or I said I was already predetermined we we're gonna even it up. We're definitely not evening it up. We're down three to zero. We're gonna get swept. Damn, bro. I don't think we're winning a championship today. I don't think we're winning a championship today. But I will run it back one more year. Women, Yama, is Lucas signed long term there? I imagine he is. It would be great if he signed a one year deal, but. Women Yama's free agent, but they're gonna keep him and Luka Doncic. So, yeah, um, Luka and Women Yama as a duo is going to be like I thought the Thunder were tough to beat. This is probably even worse. But I will run it back one last season and see if I can get lucky and not match up against them. I have to get out of the Eastern Conference first, of course. Um, we are projected lottery pick here ends up being 14. Uh, so once again, I'm not gonna worry about it. I am just set dead focused on the squad we have right now although maybe we should make an upgrade arguably so uh the one position i would look at is center like i love okongwu don't get me wrong but we got a better center in town that could probably help out a bunch so uh but it has to be the right center so like anthony davis 34 though so i don't know if i love that uh this the rotation is dude if we can get Jokic, that'd be awesome but that's not gonna happen um miles turner not really doing it for me so i don't know if shingoon i guess Wimby, Luca, of course, are not uh, available. They do say Shingun is a, you know, a low-key uh, Nikola Jokic, right? Like that, that's uh, his ceiling or whatever. Uh, so yeah, Shingun doesn't feel too bad. Alex Starr, of course, is awesome, uh, but he is untouchable. Uh, Giannis is, I mean, the Bucks are selling. Giannis could be available, but, you know, pulling off a Giannis trade is probably impossible. And he has no trade clause, but imagine I got Giannis on this team. We have seven as well. I didn't even realize that. So we have the seventh overall pick. Um, if I give you Trey, I mean, bro, I'm just throwing stuff at the wall here, but I'll throw Josh Keaton this trade. Would you guys do this for Giannis? Oh yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not going to let a hell out, get the hell out of here. So yeah, we're, we're moving on from the next thing. So we're not getting Giannis, uh, Jared Allen. So yeah, I guess the first guy that popped out to me, I, I forgot who it was. It was uh, Shingun. I mean, Shingun would be interesting to bring him in to give us a little bit of a punch there at the center position 24 years old he averaged 17 points per game last year with eight rebounds uh he is making a bunch of money though so it'd be hard to match him without throwing a kong in here uh trey man and i guess we wouldn't need paul reed in this scenario so trey man paul reed in the seventh overall pick for shingun what do you say? They agree. So we get Shingun. Welcome to Houston. Or not Houston. Atlanta. Shingun. So that gives us a brand new center to help us maybe compete with Victor Webb and Yahama. I don't know how much that's really going to help, but whatever. We still have a nine rotation, especially if we keep Kobe Buffkin, which he'll finally get an opportunity here. So we also got Hickson or Se Sebastian, whoever the hell that is. Uh, Cooper Flag, Ron Holland. I forgot auto journey the class, but whatever. Buffkin, John Juzang. I'm going to resign Buffkin. Women Yama's free agent. You know, if you want to go anywhere but the Spurs, I, I wouldn't blame you, by the way. Ben Simmons, but I am going to just bring back Kobe Bufkin. He is asking for quite a bit of money, but he's going to get an opportunity here finally. So we're going to sign him and we're going to be happy with this. So did Women Yama sign anywhere else? Let's see. Um, I forgot how you look at what has happened so far. Let me just go see if the Spurs have him back. They probably do. Uh, they do. So yeah, that's still going to be a problem to deal with, which is not surprising. But one more last season here. This video has probably been a long one, to be honest, but whatever. It's, you know, it is part of the game plan. So, Cooper Flag is up to 90, so that should help out. Uh, rotationally, everyone's developing, which is great. But let's get into this final season and hope that maybe we match up against the Spurs again. Actually, let's hope we don't. Let's match up against, like, the Kings or something. But let's get in the finals, hopefully. We'll see what happens.
So I don't know why, but Shingun was coming off the bench. He went sixth man of the year. I just left it. Uh, so I was like, okay, if that's what 2K thinks is best. So yeah, he won sixth man of the year, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but we don't have any All-NBA representatives here, it looks like, once again. So have not gotten one throughout the video. First seed the East again. So, I mean, the ultimate goal, of course, is just to make it back to the NBA Finals and see who matches up against us, whether it's the Thunder or the Spurs. But we got to get through the East first. So, quickly, Dale and Terrasar, Stewart, and Miles Turner. It's not a foregone conclusion we make it out of the East. How, bro, how do we lose that? No idea. I'm going to get on that note. I love 2K. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you all in the next one. I I'm saying bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.